Hello everyone and welcome to your damn jets. Today I want to do the second part of my sleep study video series uh, and today we're gonna go over the actual study. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna, uh, there are probably gonna be other videos after that once I get diagnosed with something and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I had, uh, the study was done last night and um, it was pretty nice. To, I was uh, served by a lady, I think she was called Chana, and uh, she was very nice with me. And my wife had a sleep study too uh, some years back, and apparently uh, she was served by a Russian guy who didn't speak much English and couldn't an answer questions. Uh, my experience was completely different. It was very nice. Um, so this is my room, and I took a video of it. Um, it was a pretty nice and big room, uh, and the bed was a, you know, I'm gonna pause this, the bed was a normal bed instead of a hospital bed. I, 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 I didn't know what to expect, I thought maybe I would be sleeping in a hospital bed, but it was more of a normal bed, um, uh, and you can see in, in the corner the, um, uh, the device that they attached to me, and then I had a private, uh, bathroom. Um, and I'm gonna stop this there and uh, you can see this is what I look like once they had uh, attached everything to me the, there are a, a couple of things you don't see on this picture I do have bands also going across my chest uh, to measure my respiration and I also had leads going to uh, my legs uh, which made it well, not just that. It, it made it different than a, than an EEG. That the 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 things that were on my head are for an electroencephalogram, and I also had the tube going into my nose uh, to measure. Again, I think it's respiration, but probably a different measurement. Uh, and I had a thing that also got, went into my nose to check. Uh, I think the temperature or something. And I had things around my mouth to, uh, I guess, uh, from what I understood, it was to, to see if, I guess maybe it's to measure grinding, if you grind your teeth during the night. And uh, then I had the bands on my chest, and I had the leads on my legs. Um, I suppose the, legs on, the leads on the legs are for uh, verifying whether you have, uh, uh, you know, if your legs are twitching at night, stuff like that. Um, and here is the device that receives all, all the leads. Um, and I found, uh, after the fact that I had over prepared for my, uh, test, um, I used my Chromebook for maybe 30 seconds and then I had to shut it off because the lady was coming in to put the leads on me. Uh, I did not read at all. So it didn't matter if my book was exciting or not. I just didn't read it. Um, I didn't brush my teeth even. Because the problem was that once this, this lady had put all the leads on me, and I didn't realize that at first, I thought it was be more like a, a, an electroencephalogram, which I received before. And when I had the electroencephalogram, they, they put all the stuff on my head, and then my head was even bandaged at that point after they had put all the leads, and there were much more leads than you saw in the picture here. Um, and it goes down to a device, but when I had the, the electroencephalogram, they, they showed me how to unplug the thing from the device to go to the bathroom and you know I could have undone it to do anything I wanted but the instructions were if you need to go to the bathroom then you unplug it and then when you come back you replug it um, I was not supposed to just unplug it and start dancing around the room <laughs> yeah that was different and that that surprised me I was not told that uh, that once the lead the leads were on me I basically, it was very difficult to move, not in the sense that the leads were weighing me down or anything, but I also had leads going to my legs and these things could detach easily. And they did detach when I, 
I didn't go to the bathroom at night, but they did detach. Just when getting into bed, they, they detached. And I did ask uh, in, in the night to go to the toilet. So the lady came and I went to the toilet. And then when I came back, they had detached again. It, it's super easy to get the leaves detached from where they should be. So, yeah, I did not, I did not realize that. But once you have that thing on you, you, you're pretty much ready to go to bed. And that's another thing that surprised me is when you talk to your doctor before the sleep study, you talk to a sleep specialist, they're going to impart upon you the importance of having a routine at night. You do this, you do that, you do this, you do that, and you keep the same plan, just about the same plan. I wouldn't say that you have to, no, it's not military precision, but you have to follow the plan night after night so that you're training your body to know that now is bedtime and now is relax time and you go to sleep and you just sleep. But when you go for a sleep study, all that goes out the window. Uh, I went to bed a little bit earlier than I would have if I had been at home. I think I would have had gone to bed maybe 15 minutes later, but there was nothing for me to do there. I mean, I could have read the book. I didn't feel like reading. So I just, once she had put everything on me, it was close to 10.30, which sometimes I do go to bed at 10.30, even though I should go to bed at 10.45. Um, but, you know, in, in that setting, I you know, was like, what am I going to do for another 15 minutes? I, I'm just going to go to sleep. Um, and I think it was a little bit before 10, 10.30. So y- your routine is disrupted. And I also didn't brush my teeth. I did change my socks properly because when I changed into my pajamas, I did put on new socks, Uh, but I did not brush my teeth, and usually I brush my teeth just before going to bed, so my body didn't get that signal, and there were a bunch of things that were not as usual, also in the morning, they woke me at 5 o'clock, she came into my room, and, and, you know, it was get up time, at home, it's at 6 o'clock, which is another thing which is not per the schedule. So I was um, fairly surprised uh, by uh, by that because of the doctor who imparted on me the importance of the of the schedule. I was able to take my medicine at night at least. Uh, I, t- I took my melatonin and my CBD uh, just before bed, and um, my night went fairly well. Uh, I woke up a little early to go to the toilet, as I mentioned previously. Um, but this is pretty much par for the course. I, I would say it. I would say it was a so-so night. You know, it was not a great night that I slept right through to the end until six o'clock. Anyway, I could not have slept until six o'clock because they woke me up at five anyway. Um, but it was not a, an awful night either. I didn't wake up at two in the morning. I didn't wake up. I think I woke up closer to four. And I, and I and then I was in bed and I was I stayed in bed and I was you I was not really tossing and turning. Sometimes I do toss and turn like it's like I, I cannot go to sleep and I and I'm kind of frustrated. I was not frustrated. I don't know why I was not frustrated that time in the bed. Maybe because it was a test and I figured, well, I should just stay here until something happens. And when she came to take me out of bed, I did ask her a few questions. First of all, I, I remarked that nobody ran into the room at night to put the mask on my face, which would have happened, according to the doctor, if I had severe apnea during the night. If that happens, then you get into a, what they call a different protocol, where they, somebody comes in and puts a mask on your face to help you. Uh, and it didn't, I didn't get to that stage, so that's good. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, I was asking and she mentioned events as, as she was explaining to me that she couldn't tell me <laughs> my diagnosis, basically. Um, but she said, you didn't have many events. So I, what I'm taking from that is that something, no, she saw something, but not something super serious that required somebody to come in and put a mask on my face right away. So I'm I'm hoping that that you know my doctor is gonna see see it and she's gonna be able to 
interpret the data and and come up with some plan. I think already the what we are doing, even the little banal instructions I've been given about keeping a schedule and uh, you know not napping during the day and stuff like that. I think it's already helping. But I'm hoping that the psychologist, who's a different doctor from the sleep specialist that I'm seeing, the psychologist is going to help with behavioral therapy. And uh, maybe when when I see the neurologist again, she's going to have more insights about what's going on uh, with me. Uh, so yeah, I think there's going to be another video, um, probably about diagnosis and maybe there's going to be more after that. I, I don't know how long the story is going to go, but, uh, we're trying to, to, to get down to the bottom of why is it that I have, uh, trouble sleeping. So uh, with this, um, uh, I'll say goodbye and uh, see you in an, another episode.